represents in the story a, a symbol. He is, it's a metaphor. And Jesus is a metaphor for the sun. And so, I, so boiling it down, Christianity is sun worship based on astrology. Because nobody owns the sun. Africans don't own it. And, uh, you know, and, and, and we don't own the sun. So obviously the sun belongs to God. So it's God's sun. And he's the light of the world. Of course the sun's the light of the world. What else lights the world if it's not the sun? And he has 12 helpers. Of course, the 12 signs of the zodiac, the 12 months of the year. Uh, he is our risen Savior. Of course, it rises every morning about 5.30. And the sun is your Savior. If it don't come up, we're dead. So once you start breaking down the symbols in the, Old, in the New Testament, you begin to see that Christianity is basically astrology and sun worship. But it has been so well hidden and, and so, so cleverly disguised. And once you start breaking it down and reading the whole story, it becomes overwhelmingly obvious this is what we're talking about. He has a virgin birth. He's born of a virgin, of course. Virgin birth because one of the constellations of the zodiac is Virgo, Virgo the Virgin. Let me give you an example of how this works. On the first day of summer, the very first day of summer, the sun is as high in the northern hemisphere as it's going to go. It doesn't go any further north. The first day of summer, the sun is as high in the northern hemisphere and it begins to work its way south. And each day it moves one degree. And as it moves one degree each day, 30, uh, 90 days later, or 90 degrees later, it's halfway down. So now we say that the sun was the Lion King in summer. The Lion King, because the sun was in the constellation of Leo, the Lion King from Disney. But then as the sun moves southward, it finally hits Scorpio. So God's sun was really hot. He was the Lion King, but now he's falling. So now we call it fall because he's falling, and he's falling south. So the, the, it moves into um, fall in Scorpio. This is why Judas gives Jesus the kiss of death, because Judas represents Scorpio. And Scorpio gives the God's son, the light of the world, the kiss of death. And now he's going to die in Capricorn. He's going to die and go all the way down. But what's interesting about this is that the sun goes all the way down south until it hits what is called the winter solstice. And that's on December 22nd, the sun hits the lowest point on the sky in the south on December 22nd. It's called the winter solstice, uh, the beginning of winter. And for three days, the United States Navy can show and explain it to you that the sun comes up for three days, 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, on the same degree. It doesn't go any further south, and it doesn't come back north. But on the same degree that it was on on December 22nd, the sun rises the next two days, 23rd and 24th, on the same degree. So the ancient people said that the sun was alive, he was a, the, the lion of the tribe of Judah, Leo. He got the kiss of death from Scorpio. And now he is three days, he's not moving at all. So therefore he's in his tomb for three days. Then on the 25th of December, the sun moves one degree northward. And you can calculate that as the Navy does. You can calculate it's very slight, but if you got the right instruments, you can see the sun move one degree northward. Therefore, it came back to life. So now we celebrate God's Son being born again. He's born again. When? On December 25th. So we celebrate Christmas or Christ Mass. But as the sun moves back toward the northern hemisphere, it crosses over the equator at spring. Because he was dead in winter, now he's springing back to life. So as he comes back to life and crosses over the equator... There was a celebration called the Passover because the sun has passed over the equator coming back to the northern hemisphere. And so today we even say when someone dies, we say grandmother passed last night, grandfather passed away, or they passed on. But always pass was associated with death. 
So God's sun has passed over the equator. So once a year, the, uh, around the world, the Jews celebrate the Passover, which is nothing more than the sun passing over the equator. And Christians, of course, cannot do that because that's, that's Jewish and they wouldn't want to have anything to do with the Jewish celebration. So Christians have a totally different celebration. They call it the resurrection of God's son. And so they go out on, 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 the, you know, on the Passover and go out and have something called the Easter sunrise service. So you actually have Christians going out and waiting for the sun to come up for something called a sunrise service. I mean, what is that all about? Christians are worshiping the sun? And, and then when you start looking at how the word S-O-N and S-U-N are interchangeable in, in Christianity, and God knows there's a lot of information on that, so that basically you boil down Christianity as some worship as astrology, Old Testament as astrology, some worship. Yahweh, as I said, was associated with the sun and the planet Saturn. Let me give you another example about the ancient religions of the world. Moses was a lunar deity. Uh, Moses was a leader of the moon cult. This is why in all the paintings and sculpturings in Europe, you will always see Moses wearing horns. You ever seen that? Moses wearing horns. It's in the Vatican. It's in all the uh, museums of the world. Why is Moses always pictured with horns? Because Moses was a leader of a lunar cult the moon worshipers. So at one time, the Jews were worshipers on the moon. And, and that time, a period of time, we call the period of Moses. Uh, this is why, I'm, and why? It's because the American, Native Americans, uh, their chiefs wear horns. The Vikings wore horns. Because all of these cult, the cultures, Native Americans, Vikings, and the, ancient, uh, and the ancient people of the Middle East, worshiped the moon. Uh, the moon, of course, in the lower quarter was the horns, and this is why they wore horns. Uh, in Arabia, there's a high mountain range in Arabia, and at night, from the Egyptian side, the moon comes up in the east, and it comes up from a mountain range. And so the ancient peoples believed that the moon was a god, and it lived in the mountain. And there are, written, there are religious celebrations of the old man of the mountain, the moon god. And in the ancient Arabic system, the moon god was called Sin, S-I-N. That was his name. The moon god of Arabia was Sin. And a mountain in the ancient language was, a mountain was spelled A-I. So you take the mountain A-I with the god who lived in the mountain, the moon god, Sin, and put it together, it becomes Sinai. So you get the, the, all the, uh, Moses goes up into Sinai. No, it's Sin Ai, the mountain of the moon god. And this is why Jews have their celebration after sundown, because that's when the moon comes out. They don't have the celebration during the day, because that's when the sun's out. So that's the time for Christians to celebrate God's sun. The, the Jews are worshiping God's, the moon god, Sin. So... I don't, I don't intend to, I mean, I'm not trying to offend anyone, but I'm just trying to tell you where religions come from. Religions have been given to us by the same people who gave us our government, our banks, our educational institutions, our whole entire ruddy system in Western civilization is based on religion, politics, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. It's just business. 